Welcome to Mega 10. I am Monica. And I am David. A quick reminder, please give us a like, hit the bell, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Okay, Monica, today we are dedicating this entire session to a deep exploration of FXRP, Flair's trust-minimized representation of XRP for DeFi. There are many moving parts here, agents, users, collateral design, redemption processes, oracle systems, and expansion to other assets. Each of these deserves careful attention because together they define whether this protocol can deliver sustainable value or whether it runs into risks that undermine its promise. Yes, David, let's begin with the most basic but critical element, the agent versus user roles. Because at first glance, it might look simple. Users bring XRP, mint FXRP, and then they use it. Agents are just the operators. But when you examine the responsibilities, the incentives, and the fee flows, you see a carefully designed system of checks and balances. Right. Let's take the users first. A user's responsibility is limited. They decide how much XRP to mint, they choose which agent to work with, and they pay the associated fees. They never actually surrender permanent custody of their asset. Their XRP is escrowed through mechanisms that tie it to the FXRP issued on Flare. The system ensures that every FXRP in circulation is backed by real XRP plus collateral. For the user, the big attraction is that they can take their FXRP into DeFi. Suddenly, their XRP becomes a yield-earning, borrowable, tradable token within a smart contract environment. And the costs for that user are primarily the minting fees. They pay a collateral reservation fee to initiate the process, a minting fee that goes to the agent and the collateral pool, and sometimes an executor fee for bots that complete transactions. These fees vary depending on governance settings and the agent's own parameters. For example, Songbird trials showed minting fees ranging between 0.1 and 0.5%, often split 60 to 70% to the agent and 30 to 40% to the pool. Meanwhile, agents shoulder a much heavier burden. They are responsible for posting collateral, managing vaults, contributing to pools, and processing redemptions. They hold operational infrastructure across two blockchains, Flare and the XRPL. They must remain online, monitor their ratios, and adjust continuously as prices shift. If collateral ratios fall, it is their capital at risk, and their compensation is the agent's share of mint and redemption fees, plus potential arbitrage opportunities when markets dislocate. Agents face opportunity costs, too. Their collateral is locked. Vault collateral, usually stable coins or other approved assets, must remain above a 1.3x minimum relative to the value of issued FXRP. Pool collateral, usually FLR or SGB, sits at even higher ratios, sometimes above 2.5x. This is why ROI is so carefully watched. Reports suggest that well-run agents can achieve 8 to 15% annually if minting volumes are healthy. But that's net of overhead, capital costs, and liquidation risk. And liquidation is real. If an agent's collateral ratio drops below the minimal CR for too long or below the liquidation CR instantly, their position is exposed. Liquidators can burn FXRP to seize collateral at a premium. This keeps the system solvent. The waterfall is clear. First, vault collateral is tapped, then pool collateral, then anything left returns to the agent. Users are always first in line. And liquidators are essential here. They are incentivized with premiums that may start at 5% and rise up to 12 or even 20% if liquidations drag on. This means there is always an economic motivation for third parties to step in quickly. It turns system stress into an opportunity for profit while ensuring users are protected. Speaking of protection, redemption guarantees deserve their own spotlight. The entire credibility of FXRP rests on the one-to-one -one redemption with XRP. Under normal operations, a user sends FXRP back to the asset manager contract, and the agent must pay XRP from their XRPL address. The Flare data connector verifies the payment. If the agent fails, collateral steps in and the user even receives a premium on top. And empirical data from Songbird tests is encouraging. With over half a million FXRP minted and thousands of redemptions, failures were below 1%. Even during volatility spikes, redemptions cleared, with fallback mechanisms like the Core Vault providing backstop liquidity. The Core Vault is an innovation worth highlighting. Agents can deposit XRP into this shared vault to unlock FLR collateral for reuse. For users, it also serves as a redemption pathway for large transactions. It operates under multi-sig controls, with time-locked escrows and human oversight for critical withdrawals. That makes it both a capital efficiency tool and a systemic safeguard. Now, let's explore custody and trust. 
one of the most important distinctions between FXRP and custodial wraps like WXRP or WBTC is that users retain non-custodial control. Their FXRP sits in their Flare wallet, controlled by their private keys. Agents hold addresses on XRPL, but users do not trust them blindly. Instead, smart contracts, oracles, and cryptographic proofs enforce the rules. Exactly. Agents can't simply run off with the XRP. Escrow and verification mean they can only act within defined conditions. Proof of payment and proof of non-payment mechanisms prevent fraud from either side. This design minimizes counterparty risk and replaces trust in institutions with programmatic guarantees. Which leads us into the oracles. The Flare Time Series Oracle, or FTSO, is embedded in the network. Around 100 providers submit price data, stake FLR for incentives, and are rewarded for accuracy. Updates occur every 1.8 seconds. That speed is critical for recalculating collateral ratios in real time when XRP moves. Just a reminder, remember to share and subscribe. Thank you. But latency and manipulation remain concerned. Concerns. Flash crashes can outpace updates. Coordinated attacks on oracles could theoretically distort prices. That's why the FTSO uses commit reveal schemes, interquartile ranges, outlier filtering, and anchor prices to reduce risk. Governance can also fall back to secondary feeds or pause liquidations during outages. And outages have been rare. No major failures in V1 of FTSO were reported. Still, investors should remember that oracles are a systemic risk. If prices are wrong, collateral ratios are wrong, and the entire liquidation system could misfire. That's why decentralization of providers and continuous monitoring is essential. Turning to liquidity and utility, FXRP is being integrated across Flare DeFi. SparkDex, BlazeSwap, Enosys Loans, Firelight, they are all preparing or already offering FXRP pairs, lending, borrowing, and staking. Yields for FXRP holders in lending protocols range from 4 to 8% APY. Liquidity providers in AMM pools might see 8 to 25%, though impermanent loss is a risk. Borrowing costs are higher, sometimes 6 to 15%, and in periods of high demand, they can spike to 20 to 30%. These dynamics resemble traditional credit markets, but with the programmability of DeFi. For the system to be healthy, TVL has to keep rising. Analysts suggest at least $100 million in depth is needed to support institutional scale. TVL growth has been strong. Year-over-year -year increases of 400% brought Flare's TVL to about $85 million. Liquidity bootstrapping programs, including a $2.2 billion incentives initiative, have been key drivers. The challenge is sustaining growth once incentives taper. That will be the true test of organic demand. Let's compare FXRP to other wrapped assets. WBTC is the classic custodial model. BitGo holds the BTC, mints WBTC, and redeems it. It's simple, efficient, and cheap, but it requires total trust in a custodian. FXRP avoids that by distributing responsibility among many agents with over-collateralization. WXRP is similar, centralized custodians issue it. That makes it fast, but risky from a trust perspective. TBTC is a closer peer to FXRP because it uses threshold cryptography and decentralized signers. FXRP instead relies on economic incentives, collateral, and liquidations. Both approaches minimize trust, but FXRP leans on economics, TBTC on cryptography. Historical resilience matters here. MakerDAO survived March 2020's crash and other downturns because of over-collateralization and automated liquidations. Centralized bridges, on the other hand, have been the biggest vector for hacks in crypto. Billions lost. FXRP's designers clearly studied that history and built defenses accordingly. Expansion to Bitcoin and Dogecoin is on the roadmap. FBTC and FDOGE will operate under similar rules, but they bring new risks. BTC has slower settlement, about an hour for confirmations, so operational procedures have to adapt. Doge has higher volatility and a retail-driven market, making it less predictable. And correlations are the real danger. In normal markets, XRP, BTC, and DOGE have moderate correlations around 0.4 to 0.7. But in crises, correlations shoot up to 0.8 or 0.9. That means collateral stress across assets could hit simultaneously, overwhelming pools. Governance can mitigate this with per-asset caps, higher CRs in stress, and diversification of collateral beyond FLR. But these are not trivial design decisions. They affect ROI, adoption, and systemic safety. Which is why monitoring metrics is so important. From day one, we should track minted supply, redemption times, average and tail CRs, agent concentration, and liquidation events. Songbird data showed over 500,000 FXRP minted, CRs averaging above 1.5, redemption times between 15 minutes and 6 hours, and failures under 1%. 
High concentration is a red flag. Ideally, no single agent should handle more than 10 or 20% of supply. Otherwise, one failure could ripple across the system. Users and investors should keep an eye on dashboards that track these distributions. Also, Monica, stepping back, the big picture is clear. FXRP is designed to give XRP holders access to DeFi in a non-custodial, over-collateralized, trust-minimized way. It trades capital efficiency for resilience. It uses layered collateral, oracle feeds, and liquidation premiums to maintain solvency. And compared to other alternatives, it stands out for its focus on user custody and systemic safety. The risks are real, oracle latency, multi-asset contagion, concentration, but the structure is deliberate and transparent. Drop comments below and subscribe to our channel. Monica and I are personas to make content more engaging and relatable. Not legal and financial advice. Do your own research before making any investment decisions. By the way, here's a useful wrap-up. One of the simplest metrics to follow is the average collateral ratio. If it trends steadily above 1.5, the system is healthy. If it starts dropping towards minima, that's your early signal of stress. Watching that in real time gives you an edge in understanding systemic safety. Then, see you next time.